guys, this is Tina from Shabby Dabby Doo Doo. Welcome back to my channel. So we're here for another one of our mass making sessions. We are up to week number 175 with Jubilee. So for anyone who doesn't watch my channel, we are doing reruns. So we're rerunning week number 75, doing week number 175. And what we are mass making today is little mason jars. So when I made these last time, I used um, quite a few six by six papers. Now I'm not going to use six by six papers probably today. Um, I'm going to be using, you know, printables. But what I'm going to do is I may use a six by six paper here as a template to just cut some of my printables down to six by six size, if that makes sense. Having said that, we can make some without, you know, um, six by six. So, sorry, I'm going off at a tangent already. I do apologise. Right, what you are going to need is you're going to need a variety of papers. Now, what I'm trying to say, I think, is your minimum size that you are going to need is really a three by six. Um, because we are going to cut this kind of in half um, but you know a six by six you could use printables you could use scrapbook paper any papers that you like the only kind of thing that I would say really to that is that you probably want thicker paper so my paper obviously the print uh, the you know the six by six is I don't know it doesn't say here but you know kind of scrapbook paper so it's it's thicker um, and my printables I have printed on, this is 230 GSM paper. So it's thicker than normal paper. I wouldn't necessarily say it's cardboard, but it's definitely kind of much, much, much thicker than a normal paper. Um, so yeah, you're going to need those. You're going to need some scissors, unless you like to use a paper trimmer, in which case you may prefer to use a paper trimmer. You may want to have a ruler if you like to measure. Personally, I like to just kind of wing it and then suffer later. <laughs> um, so yeah, if you like to work with a paper trimmer, if you like to use a ruler, that's fine. Um, I'm not going to. Scissors, you may or may not need a bone folder. If you don't have a bone folder, you can obviously use your scissor handles. Um, and then some glue. Now, I always really use the Anita's Tacky Glue. Mine happens to be in one of these Sugar Bell bottles. So that's kind of for the basic making of them. Now, the other thing that you're going to need, and I'm saying this, but I'm going to give you an alternative. So if you have one, I am using the We Are Memory Keepers envelope punch board. Now, this is obviously the, you know, the most straightforward way to make these mason jars. And this is how I made them last time. That being said, I don't want this to be inaccessible for those people who don't have an envelope punch board so I'm bringing in some alternatives don't know what's going to work best um, so I'm just going to bring in a few actually I'm just going to use a rectangle as well um, just going to bring in a few alternative kind of punches and we're going to play around a little bit um, just to give some alternative um, options for those people who don't have an envelope punch board so I've got here an oval punch, circle punch, and a flower punch. I've got a rectangle punch, and I've got a corner rounder. I'm not going to be using all of these, but we're going to play around and just see, you know, because one thing might work better than another. So I'm just going to put those to one side, and that's pretty much all you're going to need, okay? And then if you want to decorate some up at the end, then you may want to have some bits to decorate them. So I'm just going to put these to one side. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take my first sheet of paper and the other thing that I would say is you may want to have double-sided papers purely because we're going to make little foldy pockets, if you see what I mean. So you may like to have them double-sided so that you've got something on the back. Um, again, that's all personal choice. You know, you might be happy without them having something on the back. Personally, I like them to have, you know, something on the back of them but all completely and utterly up to you. So I'm going to give you kind of a couple of options. So I'm going to make one first of all, just using, this is an A4 sheet printed double-sided, like I say. So I'm just going to cut it down now. I'm going to cut it down again, judging by eye. So just kind of along there. Now I would say this is kind of about thirds. So yeah, I've just kind of cut it roughly a third off of there. And this is going to be the foundation piece for our 
mason jar now if i just put it here it's getting on for four inches wide it's not quite but it's getting on for four inches wide and then all we're going to do is basically make our little mason jar from this sheet so taking your envelope punch board now i'm going to just put this here with my edge right butted up against the edge of the punch board i'm going to punch one and then i'm going to just turn it straight over again put my edge right to the edge of here and just punch my little you know debris like that and then that is going to be the bottom of your jar and also your guide for your fold up pocket so just like that okay like that and then all I'm going to do is trim it down here now this is where of course you know I said that I just kind of make mine and then suffer later I'm going to just trim my pocket down obviously if I had measured these you know and done them to a precise measurement these are all kind of things that I wouldn't now have to do but I just find it quicker and easier to do it like this okay so that's my folded pocket I maybe want to make it slightly smaller still so I can just cut that down there okay like that and then to get your shaped piece for the top i.e you know your lid of your mason jar what you're going to do is you're going to put your piece in here okay now what you want to do is have the edge of your paper running along can you see i'm just trying to show you see that little pointy bit just bring it up see that pointy nodule bit you want the edge of your paper to run beside that so if i just bring this up to the camera literally the edge of your paper to the end of that thing in my bob and you just punch that in and then again turn that over exactly the same so the edge of that paper running to the edge of that little pointy thing okay and that's your top of your mason jar and then all you're going to do is oops cut in here let me put my, my uh, glasses on for this bit cut in here like this okay one and two like that and that's it that's your little mason jar how cute is that and then of course you know you glue your pocket down now you can probably see i mean my pocket i've not even folded it quite correctly so you know it's a bit kind of yeah and um overlapping but you know it's all fine no one's going to be inspecting this when you've made it it's all going to be absolutely fine so i'll just see if i can move that down slightly like that squish that down with my bone folder or my scissor handles like that okay and then i'm just going to glue that pocket up so using some glue oops this is the first time i've tried to use my glue today so it's just protesting slightly okay here we go oops now it's now it's really easing out so yeah from, from one extreme to the other Right, okay, let me just quickly scrape out some of that because I've got way too much glue on there. Okay. Actually, why have I wiped that on the table? I have no idea. Sorry, I'm um, obviously a bit chaotic today. Um, so we just squish that down there on those edges like that. And that's literally it for our mason jar. So this is obviously the back where you've got the pocket or or it could be the front personally i'm going to have that as the back and this i would decorate up like a little jar on the front so we shall do another one just to kind of run you back through again so oh and that paper sorry that was from my claridge's um set of papers so let's take another one so let's take this one so this is my pink lady papers so again just judging by eye here so going in about here, and remember we said approximately kind of a third 
of the way along. So, you know, just approximate. No, you know, no need to get kind of too stressed out. And then what we're going to do is we're going to just bend our pocket. Oh, no, we're not going to do that yet. We're going to put our piece in. So I'm going to start on this edge because that's the straight edge. So remember, you're going right up to this edge here. And again, right up to that edge there. So when you turn your paper, you're flipping it. You're not turning it over kind of, you know, um, oh, I don't know, you're not doing it that way. You're flipping it like that, okay? And then you take your pocket and you can just fold your pocket up like that. Now, obviously mine has got um, text on there, so it's, you know, now upside down, but that's all fine because, you know, we'll probably decorate the pocket up anyway, so that won't really matter too much and then you fold your little pocket up like that I'm just going to trim it down here along the sides so trim it here make my pocket smaller okay like that Oops. I have made that very very lopsided not good not good at all like that okay I mean that's probably quite a stumpy um, mason jar it's got to be said but hey I mean you do get them in different sizes but if you're not happy and you think you've cut it a bit wide you can always just you know go down a little bit and actually you can even do it like you see here after you've done your little you know notches here and all that's you know going to happen is your jar is going to have a slightly smaller like bottom base type bit and again, that all looks fine. You know, it's all it's all going to be good. It's all going to be very forgiving. And then you take your piece of paper for your lid and you put it back into your envelope punch board. Again, remember, you're going up to that edge of that little sticky out bit. So like that, flip it straight over. Oops. Put that straight to that edge again. And then you can go in and you can just cut down your lid like that and like that okay and that's your little mason jar so again we're just going to then glue those bits in okie dokie So like I say, I mean, the reason why we, you know, why I mentioned the double sided paper is just because when you've obviously folded it up, this on the reverse side is visible, you know, this. So, you know, it's just kind of up to you how you want to do it. But you may want to have your back decorated. If it doesn't bother you it being white, that's fine. Then don't, you know, you don't need to use the double sided paper. Um, but if it does, just ensure that your paper is double sided and that will just, you know, get around that problem. So let me just trim that down there. There we go. And that's my little mason jar. So super, super cute, aren't they? So should we try and make one without the punch board now? Like I say, I mean, I don't know how this will turn out, but, you know, just kind of giving it a try, really. So I'm going to take this. This is from my flying tapestry papers and I'm just going to cut down maybe this side so again going approximately a third and like I say you know you can trim this up afterwards it doesn't have to be accurate it doesn't have to be you know you can yeah go in and kind of alter these afterwards so and we're going to be folding this up to make the pocket now do we want to have the mason jar this way round or this way round yeah probably that way round so putting this up against here again up against the end punching oh but I was said I was doing this without the punch board didn't I I'm so sorry I totally forgot right we'll do another one in a second without the punch board I just totally forgot so again we've got this and we just then bring the pocket up like that I mean actually the most difficult part of this is probably lining up these little notches here um you know and 
trust me, I mean, that's not difficult at all, you know, but if anything is, you know, slightly fiddly, that's, that's the thing that's fiddly about these. Um, but like I say, not actually in the realms of very fiddly at all. So that's our little mason jar. And then again, just want to go in, remember putting these little thingy mail bobs or, you know, the edge with this little thingy mail bob here. And then on this edge, exactly the same like that and then we just cut in here to form the lid so you know actually super easy i mean they look a little bit fiddly and i have to say when i because i always have to re-watch my mass making video to remember what i was doing and things um you know because obviously it's been a long time but when I watched it, I had started, um, I'd followed somebody else's tutorial and I'd started with the six by six papers. Now I have to say, because I don't really like measuring, that kind of put me off quite a lot, um, you know, straight from the, the off. So yeah, if you're like me and kind of don't like measuring, you may prefer this method. I'm not even going to bother following the other method that I'd used in the other video because I actually found that quite confusing. Um, and you know, that's part of the beauty, I think, of doing the reruns of the mass making is, you know, you kind of get to learn what works for you and what definitely doesn't work for me is any form of measuring and precision. So, you know, I just, I like to just wing it. <laughs> so, um, yeah, kind of go with how you like it. Now, as you can see, just got a bit of an overhang there. So if you get this kind of happening, you can just go in and just trim these bits up it's all very forgiving and very simple which of course is what we like isn't it so that's my little corners so i'm just going to put that to one side right let's now make one not using the envelope punch board let's see if i can remember this time okay so i'm going to cut this down again approximately a third not being too precise just guesstimating okay so that's my piece now what i think is best to do if you're not using the punch board is fold your pocket up straight away so i'm going to fold my pocket up here like that and then i'm just going to trim this edge down try and make it a bit kind of straightish and lining up okay and then what i'm going to do here oops that needs a bit of lining up at the top i'm going to then punch my feet for my jar so this is why I bought in a variety of punches. So we can have a look and see what punch works best. So I've got here a flower punch because I thought perhaps the petals would work. As you can see, that's not going to work. It will look ridiculous. Unless I do it right back there. And that could work, to be honest. I've got an oval punch. So again, exactly the same. Oops. If I go in, depending where I put that, I could kind of make my feet with the oval. I've got a circle. This is probably a bit on the big side. Oh, actually, it might be okay. This is a 1.5 inch circle. So you could kind of do it like that. Now, I do have a one inch circle punch as well, which actually I'm just going to bring that in and just see because it might be that that would work better. Yeah. So, yeah. If you've got a one inch and a one and a half, don't use the one and a half. Use the one inch. I just think you're going to get a more, you know, better better shape foot now what I'm going to do I'm going to mark on my punch where I'm doing this okay so that then I know exactly where my piece of paper went into so this is a permanent marker Oops, like that okay so I've just marked on there now unfortunately um, I no longer have, you know, the little flappy bit. I always take those off. So, you know, it's, yeah, my own fault. I haven't got that. Um, otherwise I could have perhaps marked it onto there, but I've just marked it onto the outer frame and that's going to do a lot, going to enable me to put this in to those markings like that. Oops. And then I can turn it over again. We're flipping it over and I put that straight in to those marks again okay and then my feet are pretty much level and the same size 
Now for the top part, we obviously want to create this kind of thing. So I'm trying to think now what I might have. Haven't really got anything brilliant. So let's have a think. Do we want to go in with this and then level it off? Yeah, I think we'll do this. So I'm going to use my top mark, i.e. you know where I've put this, and then I'm going to just bring my Sharpie in again, or you know, my permanent marker in again. And I'm just going to kind of mark roughly where I've done this to. So if I had that to there, oops, sorry, I'm not doing a very good job of holding this steady. So if I had that to there, I'd then do it like to here. Okay, so again, just marking my little mark on there. So, I can then do that so I've taken it to that top part and to that part oops to that line like that and then flip it over and the other side exactly the same so go into those kind of guides like that and that's my little lid and then as you can see I've just got a rounded corner so all I want to do is now just go in and kind of take that out now I've probably mucked this up a little bit and I probably should have just gone straight in but I kind of thought oh I'll be clever and go in like this actually to be honest this hasn't really worked because I might as well have used my rectangle punch doing this um yeah I should have literally just snipped the very very corner off because as you can see I've now got this kind of weird weird shape going on here which doesn't look great um but I could tidy it up a bit with my corner rounder. Oh, I'm not going to be able to get that in there. Okay, so I will have to tidy it up myself. Or perhaps I could... No. Right, okay, I'm going to muck it up otherwise. So I'm just going to kind of go in and round those corners. Oops. Like that. And then I'll just round this corner slightly of the lid of the jar, just like that. So it's not worked brilliantly, it's got to be said. Um, definitely, I think I could have done a better job with that um, top of that. I'm not over keen on this straight, but having said that, I mean, some jars are like that, aren't they? Um, but, you know, you could mess about and you could probably round these down, you know, Maybe more like that. Looks a bit better. Yeah, I mean, straight away that looks better. And then again, just kind of round those so they're not quite so angular. I mean, that looks not too bad, doesn't it? So, you know, there are ways to do this. If you don't have an envelope punch board, please don't be put off. You can definitely, definitely do these. So yeah, definitely, definitely. Okay, so yeah, I've probably shown you enough now. So I think we can just kind of relax and have a nice time and just mass make a bunch of these. Um, so I probably do it kind of assembly line style. And I know I say this every week, but yeah, just assembly line style, i.e. all of the individual steps at the same time, if you see what I mean. So I will do all of my cutting and then all of my, you know, punching on the punch board and then all of my folding and all of my gluing, all kind of like in an assembly line kind of production type way so yeah let's just relax now and have a nice time have a catch up okay so let's just cut all of our papers down so I've got here some um papers that are kind of like off cuts and I have to say these are not double-sided so I'm kind of going completely against all what I've just been saying but we can ink these up at the back and then we can see you know what kind of difference it makes whether we don't like them when they're not double-sided so I'm just going to again just roughly cut these down now, obviously, I don't really have kind of a whole sheet of paper here to judge whether I'm doing a third or not. So I'm just kind of, yep, having to really judge these by eye. So I'm just going to cut those down like that. Okay. So this one was from my autumn, not autumn, sorry, my Victorian gallery. Sorry, I don't know where the word autumn sprang from then. So this one, I want to probably... Uh, I was going to say try and... Yeah, do I want to... This one might be a tricky one to make a mason jar from, so I won't use that actually. That was just from my junk journal basics kit. 
this is from my um purple rain kit so yeah i'll just go in and obviously this one has been double side printed which is good okay this is my flea market paper now this one i'm going to try and do that um cut around the six by six paper as my template that we talked about so let me just pull in my six by six sheet and yeah i'm going to go in here uh no this side like this and i'm just going to cut this down like that and actually by doing this this is really demonstrating how flexible and forgiving that these pockets are because like I say, I actually was very kind of um, rigid with my measuring and things like that in the first video. So this one, I've approximately done a six by six. Obviously, I've just used that as a guide. So this is not accurate at all. And then I'm just going to kind of just roughly go through where I think is roughly the middle. So like that. And then instead of using the measurements, you know, as I did in the first video, I'm just going to guess by eye roughly where I want to have the, you know, the folds for the pocket. Now, as you can see, these are going to make a much smaller mason jar than these. Um, but again, it's just demonstrating that it's quite nice to have, you know, different size ones, isn't it? Because, you know, we don't always want to have kind of, you know, massive pockets, although I, I am a fan of massive pockets. But yeah, so I'm just going to cut this off just where my printer's not printed this quite accurately. And this is just, again, this is from the vintage, um, the Victorian gallery papers again. So let's go down there. And then this one, it is double-sided in that the back has been coffee dyed. So that's kind of where that's double-sided, if you see what I mean. So that, again, is that um, Junk Journal Basics, which I may struggle to make a mason jar from that because I really would like to keep the butterflies in there. Um yeah so maybe i won't use that this is just um i think it's my i can never remember whether this is king's park or king's street and yeah i don't know why it eludes me every single time so again just taking that down kind of roughly a third and again this one has been printed with one of those coffee dyed backgrounds and then this is from the junk journal basics kit so again going to cut the edge off where it's been you know printed borderless but the printer obviously misbehaved and just take that up here like that okie dokie right looking good so just bring that envelope punch board back in now obviously for my um you know the printables it's very easy because we just know we put them up snug against that side so they are very, very, very easy to do. You know, we don't have to kind of do any sort of judging. And then whilst I'm punching, I'm going to do the top, which is, i.e. the lid. So again, just taking the top part, putting it up against where that kind of pointy bit is. So like that. Okay. And that's all there is to them. So again, take my next one put it up against that edge up against that edge there and then again do my piece for my or do my um, slot for my lid so one there and one there okay and that's it that's all there is to these so I mean you know once you get kind of in a little um, you know like routine type thing then they're actually really 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 quick to make to be honest i mean they look very fiddly and they're another one of those things and i say this so often in the mass makings but they're another one of those pockets that looks very kind of sophisticated and you know tricky now i'm just wondering whether i want to have that on the back actually and keep the front more plain i have got some text there which will be upside down but i don't think that's really going to matter too much because you know when I decorate it I would probably cover that up anyway now I'm just going to cut along here where I've got a very slight border okay like that 
yeah, I say this so many times in the mass makings and, you know, I'm like a scratch record really, but so often these pockets and things, they look very complex and very kind of, um, you know, difficult. But actually, once you get making them, it's surprising how most of them, you know, are actually pretty simple to make. So, you know, and hey, if you've seen it on my channel, it's definitely easy to make because even if I've, you know, borrowed somebody else's idea, I would never take on something that wasn't easy. Um, you know, I just don't want to be doing complicated stuff. So, yeah, if it's on my channel, you know it's going to be doable and easy. So these little ones, obviously, that we made, you know, the six by six kind of size. I'm going to just kind of guesstimate, really, roughly where I want them. So let's hope that I'm going to kind of do an OK job of this. I'm going to put it about there. So it's around about the three, three and three. I don't know what that mark is, to be honest, whether that's three and three quarters. Yeah, three and three quarters, because I think when I did them previously, I actually felt like the pocket was a little bit too high. So, and then again, just take that down into that little piece there, like that. Okay, so again, going to try that again. So let's hope that I've, you know, put it in a good place because I've done two now like it. So one there, flip it over, and one there. So these I have done at the three and three quarters mark. I'm sure in the video that I followed, she'd done it more than that. It was something like four and a quarter or something. But yeah, I felt like that was quite a big pocket. But, you know, play around and kind of obviously do them, you know, how you would like to do them. So that's all my little corners in those. And then just literally take all of our pockets and we'll just fold all of our pockets up oops not made a good job of the first one so yeah it's tempting to always fold these too um too small would that be the word yeah kind of like too shallow and then you get like the overhang there so just remember you want to go up higher okay and now i'm just thinking actually that's why she did the four and four and a quarter because actually my pockets are actually higher this time so yes if you want a bigger pocket then you need to do them at the three and three quarters where I did but actually she was much more on the money um you know I hate that expression I don't know why I just said that but yeah she was much more kind of on the um on her game kind of thing with the four and a quarter so oh I'm so sorry I'm like literally all over the place today lots of things going on so um yeah lots of things going on today I do apologize so I hope that everybody's week has started out well for those people who watch my channel regularly you'll know I film these always on a Monday ready to go up for the Tuesday for you guys so my week's literally just started it was freezing this morning and yeah I know <laughs> talk about this all the time what a pathetic person I am with my what I've uh, um, view as freezing um yeah I went to the gym you know got up and went to the gym first thing you know which I do every day and um oh my goodness it was minus three and a half minus three and a half it was so cold and I had to sit in the car for ages for it to clear the windscreen. And I kept thinking, oh, why don't I just get out and scrape it? Why don't I just get out and get, you know, a kettle of hot water, which I know you're not supposed to do that, but hey, you know, when you're sat there freezing, you're like, oh, and I think to speed up the process. Um, but I didn't, I just sat there waiting for it to clear. Oh my goodness, it was so cold. Freezing, freezing, freezing cold. So I'm just going to go in and just ink this, this one, which, you know, like I'd said, not double-sided. So just to kind of show you really how that's going to change the appearance like that, okay? And then we can obviously glue the pockets down. So yeah, it was so cold anyway. So um, yeah was freezing yesterday well it was freezing I think the whole weekend I'm just trying to remember Saturday oh, 
can't really remember Saturday to be honest but yeah it, it's been pretty much freezing the whole weekend anyway so um but you know much more seasonable you know because actually we've had a lot of not that cold but very wet weather so um you know this is kind of preferable to be honest because they're bright sunny crisp cold days oh it's only when i first get up you know and i'm going to the gym when it's really 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 cold but then i'm like what am i doing why am i going oh it's just horrible but yeah now saw an absolutely brilliant film last week um and i'm sure i talked about this in last week's mass making um a film called till and i wasn't sure whether i would have been able to get to see it but i did go and see it so um yeah oh my goodness i mean horrendous film and i know that i did talk a little bit about the plot and things like that and um yeah just oh unbelievable unbelievable um I don't want to kind of spoil it, well, not saying spoil it, because it's actually quite a terrible film, but, um, you know, terrible story, but it's um, beautiful boy Emmett Till, who was murdered um, back in 1955, um, and it's the story of his absolutely courageous mum, um, you know, and her campaigning, really, to kind of, like, make his, oops, just need to cut that top bit down, because it's not borderless, um make his story known kind of thing to try and help with the problem of you know the racial hatred problem so um yeah oh she played the part amazingly and obviously i came home and then googled it afterwards and you know she actually looked really quite like the mother you know in real life and you know yeah it, just a very very powerful film um, I think it's kind of maybe like set to be like an Oscar winner and my goodness it really deserves to be it was very 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 um, you know impactful it yeah one of them films that would just stay with you like you know forever probably just so good and then on the you know the other side so you know of course it was a terrible awful story but I just can't not mention the actress who played the part, I don't feel like I'd ever seen her before, although I could have done, but you know, maybe she looked different. Oh my goodness, she's so beautiful. The most beautiful, elegant, stylish woman. And I loved the fashion from the 50s. So every single clip, she looked amazing, literally amazing. Um, so super stylish and so... Um, yeah just dressed beautifully there was one scene where it was the court scene oh she had the most stunning outfit <laughs> she just looked beautiful i know that's not what the film was about at all and you know very kind of like probably inappropriate talking about it but yeah i just had to kind of touch on that because she just looked so stunning and you know if you're someone who loves like the clothes from the 50s you know i just think you can't not mention it because it yeah it was obviously um you know yeah part of the film kind of thing but yeah she looked lovely so yeah that was the film that i went to see um there is that other film um the tom hanks one the man called otto haven't seen that i'd quite like to go and see that so i might try and cram that in at some point um if i can this week maybe like on wednesday evening when my daughter goes to her dad's house um if i can because, yeah, I wouldn't mind going to see that. Other than that, I'm trying to think if I've seen anything worth mentioning. Probably haven't, really. Um, you know, not at the cinema, because obviously that's the only time I've been. But whether I've seen anything on TV or on Netflix or anything, I don't really feel like I have. So, yeah, all a bit boring, really, in my world. So, um, yeah had lots of things going on to do with my um I know this just sounds you know ridiculous but yeah my ongoing kind of um divorce kind of thing so I mean I am divorced and I know I've said this a lot of times and I do still keep meaning I'm you know I'm going to do an update video um of where I'm at kind of in my in my life but yeah I've been doing quite a lot of things to do with that this week last week um yeah I mean obviously I've been divorced now for over a year and in fact yesterday it was two years since my husband actually moved out um 
but yeah the financial kind of thing is still very much ongoing um, you know and I have mentioned this before I mean you know so far in the last 14 months my husband actually has only paid two months any money kind of well actually this was the third month but again he didn't then pay it and I had to then contact his solicitor asking for the money um, so yeah all these things just really zap you of energy zap you of time and all of that kind of stuff so it's not the appropriate place obviously to talk about it here but yeah I just kind of thought I would touch on that because um, you know it maybe explains a little bit as to why I'm so distracted so I do apologize I'm aware that I'm being very flaky today so I do apologize for that um, yeah so aside from that my son was not very well last week so yep he was poorly last week and um yeah I think there's a lot of stuff going around oh and thank you so much to everyone who has sent their well wishes to my mum I can't tell you how much I appreciate that it's so kind of you all and yeah I'm pleased to say that she's doing well um she's you know recovering you know quite well I think so I haven't actually seen her. I'm hoping I'm going to go there. I was thinking possibly this evening after I picked my daughter up from school, but I'm thinking I'm not going to be over to now, but um, maybe tomorrow after I get my daughter from school. Um, yeah, but I think she's doing okay. I mean, obviously I've FaceTimed with her a few times and um, yeah, she's, she's doing okay. I mean, she's still quite tired and all of that kind of stuff. And obviously her you know, her hip's still quite painful when she's kind of like been on it for any length of time. That being said, she is trying to kind of like, you know, be on it a bit because I think they recommend you do a bit of exercise and all of that kind of stuff to sort of mobilise it a bit. So yeah, she's she's doing okay. So thank you so much though for all your um, kind well wishes and things. That's really, really nice of you. And thank you so much to um, everyone who's commented on the um, junk journal. Well, first of all, on the junk journals that I couldn't part with. So yeah, I hope that you liked having a look at that. It's just weird, isn't it? How we get kind of, you know, certain ones that we don't like to part with. And I'm just going to count how many we've done. So we've done one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. And let's decorate one up. So, yeah, I'm kind of thinking, obviously, um, you know, some sort of kind of label on the front of the jar. Now, I'm just thinking maybe I could use this. I'm not necessarily saying this is going to work, but, you know, it's just here. So let's just pull it in and see. Okay. Okie dokie. Yeah, so um, I hope that you're liking the series that we're doing, making the very junky journal. So... Obviously, I'd filmed that quite a while back and, um, oh my goodness, I had such a good time making that journal and, yeah, it was just so fun because it's such a freeing kind of experience, you know, it's so very different to, you know, anything that's very matchy-matchy and, you know, kind of have to bring it all together perfectly. It's got such a different kind of process and, um, yeah, I just had the best time when I, when I made it. So, thank you so much to everyone who has commented you know it does seem like you're really enjoying the, the series so thank you and um lots of you have commented saying that you can't wait for the painting the painting's coming up in a couple of days um so yeah we definitely do do the painting together and i really hope that you think that the painting makes such a big difference as i thought or as i i think it does for me the painting is the part that kind of pulls it together really and um yeah just kind of brings everything together and it will suddenly all make sense and be like ah it looks good now you know whereas at the moment we've just stuck any old stuff down it maybe looks a little bit oh that's very chaotic looking um you know so yeah hopefully you will really really enjoy the process when we actually then just, you know paint the paint the pages so um yeah that will be coming up in a couple of days i think there's like five episodes all together there's also an episode doing the cover, which again, you know, I've done loads of cover, um, you know, videos for journals, but that particular cover turned out so different to any other cover I think that I've done. So again, I really, really hope that you love, you know, love what we do with, you know, with the cover, with the, the painting of the pages and all of that stuff. So 
Right, there we go. Okay, I'm just going to ink this up slightly more to make it kind of stand out a bit more. And actually, I might even rough the edges up and I might take it down slightly because maybe it needs to be a little bit narrower. I think. So, yeah, just going to rough those up. Okay. So, yeah, I mean, definitely do kind of share below, you know, what's your favourite style of journals? I mean, lots of you did comment in those videos, you know, where I shared my journals I couldn't part with, that, you know, it's your type of thing, is the eclectic kind of junky journals. Having said that, there were comments also where people were kind of saying they'd really like to see it because they've never made anything like that. So, yeah, share below kind of what's your favourite kind of journal to make? Um, you know, because we've all probably got different you know different preferences haven't we but yeah for me you know i just had such a really good time doing that one now i'm just going to take this butterfly this is just from my um historical buildings um papers in the green green set now i am going to do a little film in a minute and show my gorgeous little house guest you know, aka my little doggy. So Bo, her name is. So yeah, and thank you so much to all you lovely people who've kind of commented on, you know, how much fun and love like a dog just brings to your house. We're enjoying having her so much and um oh she's such a good girl. I mean I've said before, but you know, we just kind of got her on loan really while my sister's husband, ex husband, is kind of, you know, unable to look after her at the moment. And um you know, we'll just have to kind of see when he's he's back from, you know, being away for three months, whether he will then, you know, kind of insist he has her back. I mean, I hope not really, because that doesn't seem very nice, you know, because she will be then settled into our, our home. But yeah, I mean, that was the agreement. So, you know, we'll just have to kind of see, but oh, she's so cute, I have to say. And yeah, we're all just loving having her here. Right, now I'm thinking we could even have it like that. I know it's a bit over to the side, but I think that would work. Now I talked about this before, but what I quite like to do when I make mason jars is put something kind of brownish across the top. Because, you know, traditionally kind of mason jars, they have like a lid, don't they? And, you know, it's often metal or sometimes maybe it's like the cork kind of lids. So I'm just having a quick sort of search around to see if I've got anything brown. Um, and I have actually got a little piece of cardboard here, which I could kind of use that, to be honest. So, yeah, this is obviously, you know, very brown, but I think that would work quite well. So I'm just going to ink that up here. And then I'm just going to cut it down. So, yeah, I'll cut it down around about here. I think this is probably taller than the the bit but that doesn't matter because you know it might actually be that maybe it looks better being a bit taller oh how cute does that look so yep just going to glue this down like that oops just ink that up like that okay right okay so that like that and then what I did in the last video and I think looks really good is because often when you buy a little you know jar they often have like a um well actually they often have like the gingham don't they like a sort of um not doily but this sort of fabric round bit on the top which that's really nice but they also often have um a kind of like tag type situation going on don't they I'm not actually too sure that I'm loving this, it's got to be said. So I think I would have been better with a a label of some sort. Let me just see whether I've got a different one. Mm, that's not great. Um, I'm just pulling in things that are laying about on the, on, the, on the desk. Well, that's not too bad, actually. I mean, it's quite small from there, weirdly, but it does strangely look okay. So even though it's quite small, it does actually look okay. 
and to be honest what I'm thinking is I could maybe put some fabric or something underneath there so I'm just going to have a look and see if I've got anything look a bit scrappy hmm. this fabric oh, I'm just wondering whether I could like ruffle this up here oh. Not making a very good job of that to be honest so yeah but i was kind of thinking i wonder if we could like ruffle that a little bit around here should we try doing that i don't know how this is going to work but and this might not really be wide enough hmm. well let's have a go oh what's the worst that can happen well the worst that can happen is it could look absolutely rubbish but Kind of thinking hopefully it's going to look okay. So yeah, just kind of ruffle that up a bit. Like that, okay. Right, I'm just going to cut that here at the side. So this is a bit of a sort of departure really from the cork, isn't it? But I think it's going to look quite good. So I'm going to now glue this down so it's kind of flat across here. like that okay so like that and I'm just going to go in slightly here at this corner just take that one down just a bit okay yeah, like that. I mean, to be honest, that's got obviously some of the card sat above it. I don't mind it being like that. Or does it look better? Perhaps it looks better cut down, yeah. Although I didn't mind it being like that, maybe it would look better being kind of even, I don't know. Let's do it like that and just quickly ink across that top bit. Like that, okay this down here oh my goodness I mean how gorgeous does that label look on there it's quite a wide jar you know I've got to be truthful and say you know it is quite a wide jar I probably should not have done it quite as big as that but it doesn't matter too much so I'm just going to take some baker's twine like that now in the last one I had a little tag that I put on here as well. So let's just see if I've got any little tags. So I'm just going to glue this down here across the back. Now I've, oops, doubled my string over. You know, no other reason other than, you know, to make it a bit more kind of impactful. Just going to ink that a bit. Okay, let me just get, woo, get a tag. I'm so sorry, this feels like it's really been a long video. I do apologise. Um, you know, it's just, yeah, it's just kind of gone like that. So, right. Okay. So these are just some tiny little tags. I think they come from the um, Tim Holtz kind of dies. I think they're from those. Oh, you might be able to hear my little doggy there just kind of you know groaning a little bit she's just asleep in her bed so yeah i will show you her in a second right let's just tie that around okay now i'm just going to do like a double knot there i think rather than try and tie that in a bow so yeah double knot there like that and then my label, like this, I can just put like a little pocket. So again, just glue that down on three sides. Like that. Okay, right, looking good. So gluing that down.
and I'm just going to see because I've got some little bows in here just see whether we might like a little bow just straighten this one out I might have to have it this way around that's okay right so I'm just going to then glue the bow which will also then hold that twine exactly as it is so a bit of hot glue I mean to be honest you can barely see that tag now unfortunately but but it is there I mean how cute does that look so your little mason jar you've got your pocket here on the back you've got your twine with your lid and then you've got here just another little front loading pocket there on the kind of label part so they're just gorgeous aren't they so yeah i really hope that you like them um i'm going to quickly show you my little doggy so hold on so this is our gorgeous little house guest i know that loads of you have asked to see her so this is Bo. And yep, she's obviously, as you can see, a little sausage dog. She's a miniature one, so she's quite tiny and diddy. Oh, she's going back to sleep. She's, she's not interested in being seen on camera. So she is here in my craft room with me in her little bed there. Um, and I've just given her a blanket because it's actually quite cold in here. And um, yeah, I've got my fan heater going, but yeah, just, just to keep her a little bit cosy. She loves burrowing um, under the blankets, I have to say. So yeah, she's um, she's she likes to get cosy. So you know, yeah, she's really kind of comfy there, as you can kind of see. So, but yeah, she's absolutely gorgeous. I have to say, this is my second time of trying to do this, and the first time she kind of was not interested at all. Not that she's interested now either, but yeah, she's obviously she doesn't want to be in the limelight. <laughs> she's not reveling in being on camera. Um, so, but yeah, just to kind of like show you, just show you her face there, so that hopefully you can kind of see her little face, because I know that, yeah, lots of you really want you to say hello. So, yeah, I'll just leave her now to go back to sleep. But, um, yeah, that's her. That's Bo. So, yeah, when I talk about her, you now know exactly who I'm talking about. Oh, isn't she just the cutest thing? So, yeah, we just love her so much. So, um, yeah very very cute obviously does not really overly like being filmed so um yeah <laughs> sorry that she wasn't more fun um anyway so yeah i hope that you like the mason jars have fun if you decide to do a bunch and um yeah i hope that you like them and just actually sorry one final thing because i do often get asked then how would you use these in a journal obviously because this has got the pocket on the back i personally would just clip this in or maybe it would go in a pocket if you wanted to use it as a pocket, i.e. you know, stuck down on a page, you wouldn't even need to fold this over. You could just snip it off at the bottom. So it would just not have that back pocket and then you could use that direct on a page. So yeah, just um, to give you a kind of little illustration there of how it would work on a page. So yeah, I hope that you like them and thank you so much for watching. I hope you all have a fantastic week and I will see you guys tomorrow. Thanks then, bye.